Ich sitze hier neben einem totalen Rock-Idol und zwar Manfred Mann von der Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Hi Manfred. Hello. Nice to sit with you here in the Kulturfabrik in Krefeld, because you play here this evening. Mm -hmm. You are touring through Europe at the moment. Yeah. Is there a difference between touring 30 years ago and um, touring today? No, it's not different. It's the same, really. Really? More, more or less, yeah. But um, 30 years ago you played in very big halls and now it's getting smaller? Okay, or? right. There's smaller halls, but apart from the fact that the halls are smaller and we're not as successful as we were 30 years ago, it's more or less the same. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. it's a dressing room. You have a big dressing room, you have a small dressing room. You have good food, we have good food now. Um, I mean, there are of course differences, but in the end, what you're t the purpose of touring is you're playing on a stage to an audience. And we're playing smaller places, but we're selling those places out. Yeah. We feel pretty good about what we're doing, so I actually prefer it now. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, the, the places are nicer to play, but it would always be nicer to play to more people, but um, I actually prefer it now. Because it's intimate. Well, there's also less pressure on me somehow. Yeah. You know, we're less important, so it's quite, it's easier. And um, did the audience change through all the years? Well, it's, I mean, I don't know. An audience isn't a person. I don't yeah, know. but other, or... Um, I mean, uh, do people change? I mean, there's people out there, I don't know them. But you see them. Yeah, are I they, see them. Are they also younger people or are they well, um, older my, ones, the, the, the fans from... It's, years ago? it's mainly the fans from years ago, mainly, but not completely. Okay. Yeah. When you are traveling yeah. during the tour, do you always know in which town you are? Or is it... <sighs> Sometimes so I know, but really, I don't really care very much. I'm only concerned with the stage and the audience and the hall. Otherwise, every day I'll be reading geography lesson. I don't even know where I am today. I don't know where in Deutschland we are. Okay. I'm not quite sure in the map where we are. I don't need to know that. I just kind of need to know certain things in my life. And some things I don't need to know. I don't actually need to know the geography. And what do you need to know during the tour? Or uh, I need about to the place you, you are? Um, I don't need to know very much. All I need to know is how far is the hotel from the hall? How long does it take to drive? Where is the food? Well, the Where food, the somebody tells me. No, the beer and food, that's easy. What I need to know is how far is the hotel? Okay. So I'm actually being serious. I, okay. know, I know you thought I was being funny, but I wasn't. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you thought, you, you thought I was being funny, but I'm very serious. Okay. No, how far is the hotel? That's important. I don't want to drive for half an hour to a sound check and then half an hour back. So if it's nearby, that's good. What time is breakfast in the morning? That I need to know. What time I've got to get up? That's important. Okay. Where I am, not so important. Do you have any rituals on tour? Or is there any... Sp any, any rituals? Um, do you have a normal tour day? How does your day look like? The day looks, you get up in the morning you drive somewhere and then when we get to the other end usually I try and sleep for an hour because I don't sleep very good at night so I try and sleep for an hour in the afternoon I might do some work on a computer or something and then I come here and do this so there's no special ritual it's just a day where you travel from one place to another do you like touring because I I think sometimes maybe it's hard because you're not at home every day you are in another town Yeah, but I'm in another town with my friends. Yeah? Yeah, so we're all traveling together in another town, so it's not so bad. I mean, touring is... First of all, the concerts are good, and I enjoy what we do. Mm -hmm. It's not enjoy it, but it's important what we do. We like doing it, and we like that we think we do it very well. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very, very important that between you and your colleagues, there's a good feeling like a family. Yeah, it needs to feel like that. And then once it feels like that, you're hanging around at an airport for half an hour or two hours, you're talking to people you like and that you get on with. Yeah. And it's also more interesting than other jobs and not from the musical point of view. When you work with these guys here, you don't, you don't stop in the middle of the night at a motorway cafe together. You don't have breakfast together every morning. So I get Very to close. 
Well, yeah. It makes um, uh, interesting experiences. It makes it interesting. It, yeah. you, you also learn how each of you are crazy in some ways and that you have problems that you would never know about mm -hmm. if you worked with someone in an office. So you start it to know people's... Closer. You know people's lives, well, it may be closer or maybe worse, it may be a bad thing, but you start to know people really well. You know how their relationships are at home with their women and stuff. You really start to know. People really start to know about it. the conversations we have. You know, we're talking the real truth to each other. Yeah, we don't have to go through ups and downs together. You experience yeah. a lot together. Well, we don't go to too many downs because we're That's not good. we're not trying so too hard to be successful. If you're trying very hard to be successful, still in that thing where you want the record to happen and are you on TV and this and that then there's a lot of pressure on you. We yeah. don't have that pressure. Because we just kind of... You like it. What well, we accept it. where we are in the music business. You know, we're some old guys playing around and doing some concerts and we're doing our best. We don't expect to be tomorrow's big new act, so we don't have that kind of pressure. When you play a concert... And also, we're not going to disappear now. People who are successful, they're worried that they're going to go downhill. We ain't going to go downhill. No, we've got, we've, years we've got somewhere and we're going to stay there. We have, of course, come down from where we were, you know, in the 70s, 80s, but... But we've now sort of settled. In fact, it's getting slightly better. And you can still do what you're doing. That's oh. also, I think many people are successful and then after that they, they fall down and they cannot do it anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's good to... Well, that's right. So I, I, I don't feel a big pressure from yeah. the music business. When you play a concert, is it difficult to come down after? Not for me. No, no, not for me. Sometimes the guys like to sit around for an hour and talk. I go to bed. Really? Yeah. After concerts, so you're tired and you can perfectly sleep? No, I can go to bed, but I can't sleep. But I go to bed. That's the first step to, to, to a good night. Yeah. Um, so you, um, you often play or you always play your hits when you, when you play a concert. Is it difficult to play the same hits over and over again? How do you motivate yourself to do this? Um, <clears throat> There's something that it's difficult to explain, mm -hmm. and that is music to me at a concert is about the groove, right? Okay. It's not about meaning, significance, social significance. It's about nothing but the kind of... It's that. And if that feels good, I never get tired of it. Really? So it's the groove. If the groove is not good, uh -huh. then you can get tired of it. But if the groove is good, I never get tired of it. It doesn't matter what song you're playing, as long as the... If that's good, then it's good. And that's all that, to me, a concert's about. Mm -hmm. It's about, is the groove and the rhythm good? If the feel, it's not about what the lyrics mean to me or it, what a big important message. I'm not interested the in... Instruments, uh, instrumentals. The feeling that comes rhythmically. Yeah. And there's a kind of... A lot of us grew up on American music. And I say something now that people won't like, but European music just doesn't have groove. I mean, the whole of Europe, to me, is a groove-free zone. They don't understand it. Um, European musicians don't understand it like American musicians understand it. And my culture is American music. And that kind of groove, you, you feel it in Tamla Motown music sometimes. It's a kind of feeling. And, and that's what I'm going for, that kind of feeling where everybody's moving. I don't want them to think. I just want them to, yeah. to move, not to hear, move. forget to hearing. Feel, to move and to, to feel. Well, you don't even feel have the to. Music. No, it feels too significant. That's a Deutsch word. You've just got to move your finger. Okay. Well, it's not a Deutsch word, it's an English word, but you've got to feel it. It's too significant, yeah, that. Okay. Too meaningful. Just that you move your hand, that's all. Once you want to move your hand or move your feet because it's doing that, then that's all you've got to do. Has there um, ever happened anything weird on stage or something special you remember? Some on stage? Yeah, something you can tell me, some story. <laughs> what, do you want me to tell you? Yes. Lady 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Manfred Mann. Well, there's a guy sitting in the front row with his hand up another girl's straight up her skirt. But okay. he, he thinks nobody can see because the audience are behind him. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the whole band and all the crew are all looking at this guy. And they're <laughs> sitting like this. And then he just looks up and he realizes we're all looking at him. And he, the audience are all behind him. I think and that's. Then, what did he do? Well, he took his finger out quickly. <laughs> Ah, that's good. That's a good story. It's a good After story. That, we had a lot of fun in the uh, backstage room. We didn't have to have fun backstage. We had it watching him. We're <laughs> just watching his face when he realized everybody's looking at him. I think that's pretty weird. Um, you said you that, um, yeah, and that's uh, the um, exciting story. <laughs> um, you said that um, Europe is a, how do you say it, groove-free groove -free zone. zone yeah. yeah, but you worked in 2004, you worked with Thomas D from Fantastisch yeah. and Fear. Yeah. How did it come to this collaboration? Oh, I just wanted somebody who was a rapper to do some talking on, some rapping on something. And I, th I think he's very good, by the way. Yeah, I think I, he is very good. I've listened to these uh, songs and he's rapping in German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, yeah, it's a special song, I think it's um, an experiment. experiment. Yeah, well, I've, I don't know, everything's an experiment in a way. No, but he's very good. When I say Europe's a groove, he's and I mean a kind of a, there's a kind of rhythmical feeling in a kind of in a lot of American music and a lot of music I hear on the radio is just tuk, 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 it's just no kind of feeling yeah. to it, uh, no real like groove. Music, a lot of electric. Sorry, a lot of electro. Yeah, but you know music. sometimes when Americans do it, you know you hear some hip hop records and they got good groove. Some of the American hip hop records are actually quite good. But how do you think? Why do you think this is? Why do you think that the Europeans are Groove-free? Groove-free groove zone, groove free and zone. the Americans are... I don't know, I think it's way in their culture, it's way yeah. back. I mean, if you play, for example, a concert in America, there's four beats in a bob, one, two, three, four. Well, a marching band would go... Dum, da, 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 dum, dum, so everybody claps, go one, two, so, so you get a European thing would be... Dum, 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 dum. Ah, Where, yeah, yeah, like that, because it's sort of schlager music, kind of marching band. But Americans would go... Dum, kak, dum. So it'd go like that as opposed to, you can just feel the difference. Yeah, Doom. yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's I, that I as opposed to, but we play, if, most of the time we play, come on, without people are doing that. In America, they go, come on, without, come on, and here they go, come on, without. <laughs> That's across the whole of Europe. Sorry, I don't want to antagonize your audience, but it's true. It's can you really say that it's all Europe? Well, there of course. Are well, of course, I can't say it's all yeah. Europe. I think it is all Europe, okay. but it's not all people. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. not all people, but generally speaking, overall, um, I think it's true. There is a new and album. anyway, I may as well offend some people. It's not going to affect my life anymore if people don't like me. Yeah. Oh, that's the the wisdom when you get older. No, I don't forget that. You don't get wiser. If you're stupid when you're 20, you're stupid when you're 80. Nobody maybe, goes. But maybe that's also good in a way. People like to say that they're wiser when they get older, but nobody goes to the old age home to get advice. Okay. Do you? <laughs> we must go to the retirement home to get some advice because they're so wise. <laughs> nobody does that. You have to do to f to make your own experience. I think. Mm. I've, um, you're, um, there is a new album out now. Yes. After ten years. Yeah. It's the first album. Yeah. How come that? Yeah, 10 years you didn't record any album. Well, because I'm stupid and I take too long to do things. Um, but it is an album of where I took very well-known tunes broadly, not everything, but terribly well-known tunes and challenged myself to see if I could do a completely different arrangement of them, but in an interesting way. So I would do something like We Will Rock You, which you think you must be mad to do this. You know, how do you do this? So. I try to find another way to do some very well-known songs. So what can the people expect from your new album? I've just described it to you. They can, ex I don't know, you just listen. It doesn't fit into any category, okay. that's for sure. It's, it's a collection of music. Um, Till Bronner's playing trumpet on a lot of it. Um, you know who he is? No. You don't, you've never heard of Till Bronner? Ah, Bronner, it's, yeah. it's a German yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. So he's playing lots of tracks. Oh, okay, yeah, he's playing, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's playing on quite a lot of tracks. Um, and he's featured a lot. And they're just 
kind of. Are you happy with the album? Are you? I am finally happy. Yeah. yeah. I, it doesn't fit into any simple category though. It's it, there's a lot of mixtures of music and stuff on it. Do you plan to go on tour with your new album? No, Just no, no. It's, no. It's recording. It's a recording project. No, we carry on as Man from Man's Earth Band as yeah. a live act. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you like recording, or do you you're more like playing concerts, right? No, not really. No? I, um, recording is an interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. I think generally we m we do better concerts than we do records. I think we're a better concert band than we are a, an, a recording band. So that I do think. Why? But Because of the energy on stage? I have no idea, but for some reason or other, it's just the case. Okay. Um, we're much more dynamic and powerful on a stage mm -hmm. than the recordings. And I don't know why that is. Everybody can't be good at everything. And, and you must have seen in your life that there are bands that make really good records. And when they get up on stage, it's just a bit like and the record. And the other way around also. Yeah, and the other way around. So I think generally we're better live, live band. Yeah. Um, That's true. I think so. But um, whatever it is, I am happy with the recording I did. And I think some of it's very good. Okay, after 10 years, you should be happy now, I think. Well, I threw most <laughs> of it away. I kept throwing bits out. Um, but I would never do that again, um, take that long. I'm not, you know, I'm just... I'm so you think maybe next year there will be another album? I, well, I'm hope, well, I don't think I'm going to do albums anymore. I'm just going to do individual tracks. Okay. So long before next year, well, next year maybe, it's only a few months now, but I will start releasing one track at a time, I think. And what do you think about Spotify, YouTube, all the things? I mean, um, these techniques have really um, changed the whole music industry. And I've listened to your album when I was running, mm -hmm. um, and I listened to it on Spotify, the Man with Man Earth Band album. Yeah. So what do you think about these new techniques? First of all, it doesn't affect me anyway very much, but I think it's a shame that nobody thinks they should pay for music anymore. I think that is a great shame for other people, that you land up doing a job where nobody thinks you should pay mm. for the job you're doing. Everything else people are prepared to pay, but that is just the fact now. So I think that is a great shame and that's a mental attitude that music is something you just get free. I think that's a great shame, but it doesn't bother me m very much. I don't care much about it, you know. Yeah. For my career, I, I for lived... The new, for the new musicians... Yeah, for new for people starting yeah. off, it's very difficult. How, you, you only can get an audience, really, not just by playing live. They have to hear your music. And there's so many people, it's hard to get anything heard, you know. Um, it's very difficult for them. I feel sorry for people trying to start now. Yeah, I think and don't that you think is there difficult. are also ad advantages? For example, that everybody can, um, can, um, or that people can listen to your music all in the world. That every music can be um, brought into the internet. You don't. Well, that's really what everybody. Yes, exactly. That is what everybody thought. And in many ways, I'm a great believer in the digital and internet age. For example, I don't like the way that news is controlled by the news organizations. So that you watch BBC News, the BBC are telling me what's important today. Mm -hmm. For example, as we speak now, there have been two weeks of Pakistan and India firing at each other and killing people across the border. It's not on any single news item because these are two nuclear powers you know, firing at each other regularly, actually almost at war, it's not on any single news item because the newspapers are, and the, and, and the big news items are always telling us what's new. So if you want to know what's going on in the world, the news cannot tell you because the news will always tell you where there's a change. So for example, You've, you shouldn't have me talking about it, I'll go on forever. No, I think For it's example, if you take the girls that are missing in Nigeria, those school girls, it's just not news anymore. They're yeah. still missing. If yeah, the whole world was going to find them, people were going to go there and find them. So something happened there, oh, so that's what's... So the news is what's news, but it's not what's happening. So what's, what do you do? Then in the internet, you, you, you watch in the internet to see Well, so what I do is now is, first of all, I try and not watch any news because I find that when I know nothing, it doesn't make it any worse. 
And if I know a lot about it, nobody's better off with I know. So I try to get ignorant now. But I look at Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T. They've got a news thing where people send in articles from all around the world. That's how I know that people have been firing across the Kashmir border between India and Pakistan. Everybody can write articles there. There's a th yeah, no, yeah, so. yeah, but they will send in newspaper articles from all around the world. Okay. And then there's some people who say, well, you know, the, and, and each headline is small, so you can see all the headlines right down. So often you get things there that are nowhere else. But also it's still news, but that's where I think the digital thing is quite good because people themselves, for example, when I buy books, I can see reviews from the public. Yeah. I'm not n needing an expert reviewer. I can see what people say. So, so sometimes you read it and you find lots of people say it's a bad book and I don't buy it. You know, you see, yes, the pa it's a powerful uh, thing. Yes, but it is people because it's not the publisher saying it's a good book. You can read what people have said and you can say, I think they've got a point. I don't like that kind of book. Sometimes I don't buy books. So I think the digital age is very good. But in music, mm -hmm. the question you asked me is everybody gets a chance. No, everybody thinks they're getting a chance. So if you make a tune and you put it on YouTube tomorrow, 30 years ago, you were a failure. You sat in your room, there was no YouTube, nobody knew about you, and you felt a failure. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you put it on YouTube, and within two weeks, you feel a big success because there's one guy in Kazakhstan likes it, someone in Peru says it's awesome, and someone in Canada thinks it's great, and three people in Alaska think it's wonderful. So two weeks later, the YouTube and the internet makes you feel good. You're still a complete failure but the internet makes you feel good. And there's six people now like your record. But at least 30 years ago, you knew you were a failure. Now you think you're a big success. Because yeah. six then people- Then they go to the casting shows, these people. Well, they can't, I mean, there's no way, but they start, the internet makes them feel good. But the truth is, mm -hmm. the big acts are bigger than ever, and the small acts are buggered. So you've now had 10 years of internet, or 20 years, how long have you had YouTube? Quite many, many years now. Mm, yeah. How many new people really make it through YouTube? And uh, tell me, who are the big acts in the world? One of them have come through the internet? No. Yeah, and if they have come through the internet, it's only because a big record company said, oh, they did a concert in their basement and the whole world did it. Believe me, when somebody does a concert in their basement with cameras and publicity in the papers, there's a big record company behind it. Mm. The truth is, it sounds like it's democratic with music, but when you've got 200 million me people playing music, yeah. you just, you can't concentrate. There are concentrate. too many. Everybody, everybody can go into the internet. And um, yeah, exactly. I think we also have a problem that everybody wants to be famous. It's not yeah. about really the music anymore. They want to have fame. Yeah. And this is the Andy Warhol sentence where he, when he said, in the future, everybody will have 15 minutes of fame. And yeah. I think the internet, maybe. Yeah. That's about the only thing he ever yeah. did that was worth anything. <laughs> but, but let's talk about, um, shortly talk about music videos. What do you think about music videos? Do you make music videos? Well, one of the things I feel, and I felt a long time, is that I'm in the business of music. Mm -hmm. I should really make sure that the money I've got, I spend on music mm -hmm. and not too much on video and g I don't want the film people to make money from music, you know, so keep it in music. But the other good thing about the cheapening of equipment is you can now make films quite cheaply. So you can, I mean in, in the 70s and 80s people were spending 100,000 pounds on making a film. Mm. Now you can do it pretty cheaply. So I think it's, if, I mean I, I've done a track, that tra I mean the first track on our album is a track with with Kanye West and Jay-Z. I mean, you know, really? Was, yeah, the very first track on the album is one that they sampled something of mine and I did a deal and redid the track round. So now that is, a, you know, we are doing a film on that. But let me ask you a question. Somebody said to me, Kanye West means nothing in Germany. These people, no, you can't, nobody ever plays hip hop on radio during the no, day. No, that's, that's a lie, I think. He I told think me, because, you know, you. He just said, there's no point in putting out anything like that. Nobody's interested. That's what he told me. And they're not releasing it as a single here. And it's the, it's the most really catchy commercial track on my whole record. And they don't want to even put it out. They say, there's no point. No one will play it. In Germany? Yeah. He said, because people don't play hip hop during the day on radio. Really? I, my um, feeling is that at the moment there are a lot of electronic tracks like uh, Avicii, like this DJ, there's a DJ culture. I yeah, think these yeah. are the... the um, the hits at the moment, but 
I think there is also hip hop. I'm not really always listening to hip hop, so I don't really know. But of course, I know Kanye West, and of course, I know songs. Well, I would made. have thought the fact that I've got a song which is, you know, a sort of Kanye West, and it's I've done it around. I would have thought that's. Together. I would. Have, well, we didn't do it together. He sampled something of mine, okay. and then I, because he sampled mine, and then I took it and changed it and asked him permission to do it, and then put it on the album, and I changed it quite a lot. Um, and German record company, all the guys who were the distributors said there's no point in putting it out and no one will play a record that has a kind of hip-hop bass, it's just no, not played on radio. It's really interesting because um, I think a lot of things have changed also in the whole music industry and I think it's, um, I, especially um, this video thing, I think today it's often more important to look good and mm. to, to make a show and not really, it, it's not really about the music often, I think. How is it, what do you think, is show important? For you? Do you on mean stage? on f on, on stage? stage? Yeah, the show, or is it more that you let the music it's talk? It has to be groove, like so I said earlier. Groove is everything. There's no point yeah. if you're sitting still looking at somebody, using your mind. If you're just looking, it's never a great concert. If you're not moving, okay, it's a groove. You're finished. I think if you just look at anything, if people are sitting still, finished. Unless it's classical music, which is different. Yeah. Well, but if you're playing any music that's supposed to be exciting and people are not moving their bodies, forget it. Yeah, of course. That's right. It's uh, a disaster. Yeah. So I don't think, I mean, but of course if you're on stage, show is, I mean, if you look bored, it's not good. You've got to be a genius. You can look bored if you're a genius. But for most people, you, yeah, you've got to, it's a show. Yeah. But it can't be a show with bad music. It's Both not going to work. Have to be. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, the music's got to be right. But yeah, I mean, if you see us, you're going, you, you'll see there's very much a kind of outgoing. Mm -hmm. Not from me. I look serious behind the keyboard, but the other guys look friendly, you know. And um, and there's a, there, you know, no, there's got to be an element of you're performing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What would you have become if you haven't become a musician? Well, That's I it. used to work for my father and I was a printer. A printer? Yeah. So what I kind of prints? Lithography, but it was just really movie posters and things, you know. Mm. It, um, so I, I used to, if I hadn't left South Africa, I might have been a printer. But I, otherwise I thought I might have been a lawyer maybe. A lawyer? Yeah. Well, why are you so surprised? Because, yeah, I can tell you because um, a printer is a creative job. Oh, no, it's like it musician. Wasn't no, printer. It's not creative. Well, it, what I was doing wasn't creative. You switch on the printing machine. You make sure the paper doesn't smudge. I mean, it wasn't. Okay, good, but it wasn't making prints like like that, making lithographic prints. Okay. It was being a printer, like newspapers. You know that sort of stuff. Ah, that's a, okay. Yeah, no, not creative, and. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. Then maybe lawyer would also. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> well, you use your brain with a lawyer, and um, yeah, that's true. I don't know any. Just by the way, I don't know anybody who's truly creative, who uses the word creative. I always think it's a word for amateurs. Yes. You know, when people say I'm a creative person, it's you know. It's too pretentious a word. Why? Not Why one do you of think that? I don't know. Not one musician I know describes themselves as creative. 
Okay. Nobody would describe themselves as creative. That's for the public. So That's my view. Uh, we just go to work. Okay. That's how we see it. Now my last question comes. Do you have any advice for people who want to become a musician in this, yeah, in this um, age today? Yeah, basically, you're no good. You're not going to succeed. And don't do it. So, so your advice is people shouldn't become a musician? Absolutely. Why? Because if you listen to me, then you really shouldn't do it. Do you understand the subtle significance here? If somebody tells you not to do it and you listen to them, then you really shouldn't do it. If you want to do it, you, you, you will do it and you will ignore the people who tell you not to do it. I think this is a very good... Uh, do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I understand. And also it's for a parent, when you have a child, when they're little children, you can tell them they're good. When they're 18, you must just tell them they're no good. Tell them you're no good, you're never going to succeed, you're terrible. And if they listen to you, then you've done them a favor. Then if they don't listen, the world is going to be much tougher than your parents. Yeah. So, you know, just don't do it. Then if you really want to do it, you won't listen to me. Okay. Yeah. And the music world, people don't understand it, you see. If you are a musician and you're a young musician, you make a record. People don't understand how nice the world is when you're a musician. Everyone will tell you how good it is. People are really nice to you. Oh, that's great. Somebody will like it. No one's going to tell you it's rubbish because people don't like to be like that. Everyone will say it's good. Gee, that's, that's wrong good. because I think also um, all, uh, only critic. Yeah, but I'm telling you what happens in practice. You. you say to somebody, somebody comes to me with a record. I say, yeah, it's really good. Really? You say it? Well, of oh. course. When I'm going to say it's rubbish, when a guy comes the door and gives me a CD, I but wouldn't do that. Not? Why not? Why not? Because it's, it's going to upset him. And I don't care about him. Why should I bother? I don't want to upset him. Why do I want to be... Uh, uh, so if somebody comes to you, you don't say it's no good. You say, mm, yes, very it nice. On if he really wants to have a, um, a true... No, you know, when somebody comes in and asks you, what will you say? You'll usually be nice to them in practice. In the first moment, because and when most I don't know him. But when exactly. he really wants to have an advice, when, when somebody comes to you and says, hey, Manfred, you are a really good musician. You People have don't come for advice. They come because they want you to say nice stuff. And what happens to you is... And they won't is, get far, I think. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They won't. Yeah. The music business is really nice because everyone says how good you are. Yeah, you just have no money. <laughs> you just, you just, nobody will employ you. Yeah. Nothing will happen. But people are nice to you. That's the problem. Everyone is really nice. No one will say you. I thought it's completely different because always, uh, people always say it's a pool of sharks. It people is a pool of sharks, but everyone's nice to you in that pool. People don't understand that. You take it to a record company, they'll say, you know, it's really good. I'm not sure we can sign you at the moment or give you any money, but, you know, this is very talented. Everybody's nice to you. Actually, it's nice. It's not what people think. I think that people can be happy when they find someone who really tells them. Well, maybe they'll be happy, but actually that's not how it happens in practice. Everybody you know is talented and wonderful and they're all doing well and they're all great. And in the end, they're in the sharks and then nothing will happen. But I don't think it's sharks. Most people are honest. I don't think there's sharks. Well, that's bad, I think. But people are nice to you in the music business. They're nice to you. They just don't give you any money. And you will fail. But they're nice to you. Okay. That's even worse, yeah. you see. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's really even worse. Yeah, course, even worse. And now with the internet, you've got some fans in Kazakhstan yeah. and Japan and, and in South America, Argentina. There's five people who think you're awesome. It's lovely yeah, world. Weird. It's really nice now yeah, with the internet. But that won't get you far. And I think, um, of course, it's hard when you get some critics. You know, for example, when I work and I also do filming and people say, I don't like that. Oh, but then you're working Could professionally you? already. You have already succeeded. But when you're a kid going to your mother or your auntie, they'll say, gee, mm -hmm. how good it is. Everybody's being nice to you most of the time. Music business is nice, just that you will fail. And particularly that's, now. That is a perfect sentence. It's a terrible kids. sentence. I mean, it sounds yeah, like... Yeah, but it, it says a lot. There is a message. And I think yeah. so this is very great to, um, to end this interview yeah, because yeah. Um, well, I mean, you can really think about this. Well, money matters. You know, do you want to go on holiday when you're older? If you have children, do you want to be able to buy them a jacket or a coat? You know, if your family are in the lo far corner of the world, my daughter lives in Australia, I can bring my daughter over to London to see her. That's money. Money's not a BMW and a bloody big Mercedes. It's not that. It's being able to see your family if they live far away. 
You know, I've got, I'm able to run my family really well. Children, grandchildren coming over from Australia. We're close and we see each other because I can pay for the airfare. And now I see there is wisdom when you get older. <laughs> you said it's not like this, but I'm going to throw this you've given you. advice. If you say that again, I'm going to throw this over you and I mean it. And <laughs> so he's going to now it's careful. I mean it. It's not it's wisdom. You. It's not. It's me. It's not because I'm older. Yeah. Fuck off. It was little, I was joking a little yeah, bit. No, course. you weren't. You were <laughs> sort of half joking. You think it's nothing to do with being older. I'm just it's, no, I would it's have the experience of life. And when you really live and when you really see things, then you understand. Don't you know lots of stupid old people? I know a lot of stupid people, young and old. Exactly. It's nothing but to do with age. But also nice people and good people. But it's nothing to do with fun. age. Old, old people are not smarter. Forget it. I'm smarter, but they aren't. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not old. Okay, it's Manfred. It's not experience. It was a really great uh, interview. You're going to have a hell of a job cutting this up to make it uh, understandable, y aren't you? Yes. It's really this hard work. work. This yeah. is our hard work. This is our hard work. But we do it and... Um, I wish you a nice concert today. Thank you very much. Okay. Das war Manfred Mann und ich muss sagen, ich muss erstmal nachdenken über diese ganzen Sätze. Es war super und jetzt schaue ich mir das Konzert an. Bis zum nächsten Backstage Talk. Tschüss.